Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek with Old Pueblo Coin, and today I have a open box uh, PCGS, the dreaded DNC edition. Uh, and for those of you who make any type of financial investments, you understand there's that little document that um, they have that says, well, past performance is not an indicator of uh, future performance. And um, I had sent in a group of coins for crossover previously, and I thought they turned out pretty good. And um, I decided, well, let's take it uh, another step. And we're going to try this again with a completely different group of coins that if you've subscribed and you follow, you've probably seen before. Uh, so, and if you haven't, you know, hit the subscribe button just so you know we do put out about six videos a week. And if you're not seeing them, it's because you're probably not subscribed and uh, you're probably not getting the notifications. So this 1882 Carson City Dollar old annex soapbox holder, the little guy, great fields, great fields, great color, love all of that. You know, you've got a little bit of some chatter contact behind the head here. You got a little bit rolling above there under the us and pluribus, you know, some contact marks on the cheek. But uh, all in all, the cheek is mostly clean. You see the big open fields that are mostly clean. The contact marks are mostly minimal. And then the reverse is stunning. Okay, so this this coin, this is, this is one of those things, right? You know the federal law, the reverse of the coin has to be almost immaculate. And then the obverse, obverse has to have some issues. The, the reverse of this coin is, is incredible. Um, here I am calling again for split grades because you want the coin to be based on the merit of the coin. Uh, and the merit of the coin is not simply one side. The merit of the coin is both sides of the coin. And this coin, Annex, had uh, graded MS65 dimple. Now, you know, I, I should probably never ever try to get a dimple on anything ever again, because even my proof likes, so you'll see coins that we send out for grading that clearly have a proof like field and they just come back with no, no annotation of any kind about it. So uh, this coin I liked quite a bit. I think uh, I, I, I'm wondering if, if it was the, the deep mirror that didn't cross or the 65. In my mind, it's probably the deep mirror. The reverse looks very deep and the obverse doesn't look as deep. You know, so you can, you can always do some like mirror tests to see how far, you know, how far down can you see the reflection right, on the coin. How, how much of that reflection can you see? So this guy, um, you know, here at the end of the video or now or whatever, you can go ahead and let me know what you think I should do with them. I'm going to have to consider that. Let me give you some price points on this coin. A 65 dimple is like $1,500, but a 65 PL or 64 dimple are both like $600. So a big jump downward. Um, I'm tempted to crack it and send it to NGC and uh, see what they say. I do like the coin quite a bit. All right, next up was this 040, also a coin that has um, some pretty neat qualities to it. It's It's got uh, kind of the old school dimple look to it. In other words, if you find old uh, NGC fatties and fat holders and you find uh, some of the annex, older annex holders, you'll see uh, coins that have this type of finish and they'll be called deep mirror proof. So I like this coin, ICG called it a 65 deep mirror proof on an 040. An 040 is not a rare coin in general, uh, but this dimple in uh, 65 dimple is close to a thousand bucks, but then a 64 Dimple is like half of that, and a 64 PL is almost nothing. <laughs> I mean, compared to where this is, I mean, it's still you know $150 coin, but comparing it to the overall value of this. Um, also, I knew this one was a big risk. I well, this is the 82 is a big risk because it's it has a higher price point. This is like an old school ICG holder, so it's like, what are you getting into, Ben? Why, why would you consider that? Well, you know, like I've said before, I'm doing this for you guys, right? 
So you can you can ex ex experience the pain without experiencing the price, right? So uh, next up, we have an ADO Morgan. For the you Morgan collectors, you know uh, the ADO. Some some of these. So the 83, 84, and 85 O are are some of the most common coins to find uncirculated. And your 80, your 79, 80, and 81 O, you get uncirculated, but man, they come kind of ugly, not well struck, or they've got this kind of weird, funky, matted finish to them. And in this coin, actually, especially the reverse, has just kind of a nice, strong. Kind of what I'd call like an early strike look to it. It's not really proof like, but just a real strong impression. You know, you've got a lot of little contact marks throughout, so it's not going to be a gem, a gem coin. It's not going to be a mint state sixty five, but it's very clean, very appealing. I think overall, and it was only a sixty four. This one is the one that I'm probably surprised the most that didn't cross. I really thought. This was a no-brainer, and it's about a thousand-dollar coin, maybe a twelve hundred-dollar coin, in a sixty-four holder. That's how rare these are to get in nice grade. You know, a sixty-three is still pretty tough. It's like a three fifty, four hundred-dollar coin. So, taking a look at this coin, uh, also, I'm very tempted to just crack it and send it to NGC and see how it comes back. And maybe I'll disagree with me, and there's just too many contact marks on the coin, uh, you know. But compared to almost any other ADO I've had, this coin is so much nicer. Uh, you know, it's really nice for the for the date. So I'm gonna th be thinking on all of these coins. I got one more to show you, and uh, maybe you guys can convince me to throw a couple on the website at a price that's slightly discounted below your normal pricing. But a couple of those I'm definitely gonna think about cracking and sending to NGC, give it a whirl. All right, this is crazy land over here. This is the 1909D. Actually, in a way, this is not as crazy as the other cracks because the other ones, or the other crossovers, the other ones are actually have bigger value swings, in my opinion, for what I think this coin probably could grade out at. So, you know, these are just so hard to grade and to grade accurately. Uh, they grade heavily based on on the overall luster. What I want you to look at as I look at what I consider to be a very nice five Indian is so the face, all that face area is in Qs, but that's where you can really see that luster pop, that bright bright color that goes over the forehead, the nose, the mouth, the lips, down into the truncation, uh, you know the bust, the neck, the bust line, and that just flows. Right, and then oftentimes when they grade these, that that's just one of the things to look at for overall quality. Uh, but the high point on these coins is not the design; it's the field, really on on most of the coin. So oftentimes they will grade these based on the field. So you'll see if you see a coin that's like really really lustrous, it'll tend to get a higher grade. And so this coin has a ton of luster going throughout it on uh, the open fields and it has a, a lot of contact marks but overall uh, overall it's pretty appealing so this coin ICG had graded MS64 now an MS64 coin is like uh, 1600 to 2000 dollar retail coin 63 is 11 or 1200 dollars so there's I know that's uh, up to a double spread if you've got it if you got the right buyer on the right day but to me, it's you know a no-brainer, nice unk coin, sixty-three all day long, and then if you can get a four on it, then that's where the where the jump is. So uh, it may be a little bit crazy. I actually did have another ICG uh, five that um, that I didn't get full retail for, but I had a dealer buy it from me. It was a similar coin, and he gave me close close to retail for it. So he liked the coin also. You know, I only bought this coin and tried it because I liked it. I thought it was a nice coin. So uh, I think I gave you some price points, some evaluations on the coins. Tell me uh, what you think. You know, I can try to price them at retail or near retail. Or, you know, how many of these are definitely in your uh, crack and uh, resubmit. 
pile. So let me know guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.